Hi again, friends, and welcome back. It's me, your host. Today, we're back with another video on our first topic of the aviation series. The most alert of you might remember what we said in the introduction with Peter a few days ago. We're going to start first with flight theory. How does a plane fly? How does a plane turn? Well, we need to approach the first question before we can answer the second one. Let's get into it. Obviously, when you look at a typical wing, you see something that sticks out a bit. The top is curved and the bottom is flat. Well, that's how a plane flies. Oh, crap. In reality, the shape of the wing is just a means to an end. In fact, it creates a difference of pressure between the top and the bottom, which sucks the airplane up in the air. There are lots of ways to look at it, but I'll present you the most simple one in my view. I call it the area method. First, we can look at the area of the two surfaces of the plane. You can see that the bottom is flat, but the top is curved. This here is a bit exaggerated, but you can see the point. The top and the bottom share the same horizontal distance. However, the top is curved. It means that the top has to cover a longer distance in order to arrive at the same point than the bottom. If I unfold the sheet, you can clearly see that the top is much, much longer than the bottom. But how does that translate into a difference of pressure between the two surfaces? For demonstration purposes, let me draw 20 dots on top and 20 dots on the bottom. You'll see what I mean. Here, we can look at the bottom. And here, the top. As you can see, the dots are much more spaced apart on the top than the bottom. And here is why it creates a different pressure. There are less molecules on top than on the bottom. And that creates a kind of support in the bottom and a pull on the top. This difference of pressure occurs when you place a system in the air and it's moving fast, just like when you're flying an airplane. You get an instantaneous amount of molecules on the top and the bottom. And since you can assume that the density of the air is pretty much the same everywhere around the wings, the molecules are spread differently on the top and the bottom. It's a bit the same thing as if you put your hand on a vacuum cleaner that's on. Instead, it's on the top of the wing and it's pulling the airplane up because the pressure is lower than the surrounding environment. That's what makes an airplane lift up in the air. This force that is created has a name, it's called lift. And believe it or not, well, actually you don't have much choice to believe me because there's other no real explanation on how airplane flies, they don't do that by magic. That's what makes an airplane lift up in the air. It's a bit complex because it has a lot of implications, but we'll cover that in a few videos. Now that we've answered our first question, we can move on to the second. How does a plane turn? Follow me on X-Plane and I'll show you how it goes. Alright, so here we are on X-Plane, our flight simulator that's going to serve demonstration purposes for most of this course. As you can see, the plane is flying in the air right now and we can distinguish between three axes in the plane. First, we get the longitudinal axis from the tail to the nose of the aircraft. And then we get the transverse axis, which is from one wingtip to the other. And finally, we get the vertical axis that's going straight through the cabin of the aircraft vertically. And as we'll demonstrate, each of the movements that we're doing with an aircraft revolves around one of these three axes. If I hop into the cockpit, You can see that we have some pedals there at the bottom, which I can move. When I move those pedals, I move the directional rudder at the back. And this makes the plane revolve around the vertical axis, because everything else is moving except this axis. If, say, I pull on my yoke, well, it's not so obvious because you don't need a very big movement to get a reaction from the plane, but there's something at the back that moves up and down. This is on the vertical stabilizer. It's like a vertical rudder. It creates a change in lift in the tail, which pulls the nose up or down. And finally, we get the ailerons and we're getting to closer and closer to how does a plane turn. If I move my yoke left and right, well, you can see the ailerons are moving a little bit. We're moving around the longitudinal axis when I move the yoke from left to right. And then, if I make my plane turn left, 
Well, we can see that it's kind of the right aileron going down and the left aileron going up. From what we've seen in flight theory, we know that it's the curvature of the wing that creates the lift. And if the wing is more curved, the well, there's more lift. And that's exactly what we're doing there with the ailerons. On the left wing, we are reducing the curvature by lifting the aileron up. And on the right wing, we're increasing that curvature by lowering the aileron. By coordinating a bit with the rudder and the ailerons, we can make a, what we call a coordinated turn, which is a nice well-rounded turn, not just simply moving commands in every direction. Pretty simple, eh? It's just a movement of the ailerons, which creates a change in the lift and then makes the aircraft move along various axes. Now, let's land this thing and finish the video. Pretty safe. Alright, that sums it up. Here's a quick overview of what we've seen in this video. We saw that planes are not much pushed up in the air, but they're pulled by a difference of pressure. This difference of pressure is called a lift, and it's a force. Then, we saw how you could control that pressure with a few handles and a few pedals in the plane. If you like the video, make sure to subscribe to Stimulation and hit the like button. Stay tuned. And until then, fly safe.